right here at 3. Let's do one more of those. That was a little crazy. Okay. Let's graph this function and then use the graph to determine the following. We're going to find any zeros, any x-intercepts, any y-intercepts. So again, we notice this looks different than our other functions. We have x inside the absolute value and outside. So we know something strange may happen. So what we want to do is say, well, where might that happen? And it's going to be wherever the inside would become zero. So I'm going to find out where that is. Another problem with this function is that we can't have a denominator equal to zero. So if x is negative 2, that would get us the denominator of zero. So negative 2 is going to be undefined for our answer here. It's probably going to look a lot like that last one we did, but we can go ahead and plug in some points to decide. We know negative 2 is undefined, right? So let's see what happens at negative 1 and 0. And let's see what happens at negative 3 and negative 4. If we plug those values in, let's say negative 1, I'd have the absolute value of negative 1 plus 2 over negative 1 plus 2. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. I get 1 over 1 or 1. If I put 0 in there, I get the absolute value of 0 plus 2 over 0 plus 2, which again gives me 2 over 2, or 1. If I put negative 3 into that, I get negative 3 plus 2 absolute value over negative 3 plus 2. This gives me 1 over negative 1, or negative 1. Hopefully you can see what would happen if I put negative 4 in there. And again, you can use the method that's in the book, um, but this method would work also as long as you're careful. I get 2 over negative 2 or negative 1. So notice my values are either 1 or negative 1 for y, depending on where I am. Let's go ahead and graph those points. The point negative 1, 1. The point 0, 1. Okay. Remember, our 2 is undefined here. Um, here's our point, negative 3, negative 1, negative 4, negative 1, and here we have undefined. Now, if anyone watches this, I go, this is technically crazy, lady. That's all right. <laughs> all right, so there we go. This is what our graph looks like. Find the zeros. Those would be numbers that for x that make it equal 0, which is not a possibility because of this denominator. There are no zeros. There are no x-intercepts. There are no zeros. And we can see there are no places it crosses the x-axis. Um, y-intercept would be the point where it crosses the y-axis. That happens at 0, 1. The domain is usually all in real numbers, but because we have a denominator here and the denominator can equal zero, that's going to exclude negative two. And the way we write that is we say, well, we go from negative infinity to negative two, and we don't include negative two, and then we start again, and from there we go to infinity. Or you can write all real numbers except negative two. The range is our y values. Well, what y values do we have? All of these, the y value is negative 1. And all of these, the y value is 1. So our range is just negative 1 and 1. Intervals of increasing and decreasing. Notice neither of these lines are headed upward or downward. They're just constant. Okay, So there really are no intervals of increasing or decreasing, only constant. Find the minimum of the function. There's not one minimum for the function. The minimum for this function is this entire line here. So the way that we're going to write that is notice for this point, all of my y values are negative 1. My x value is changing, but it is all x values that are less than negative 2. So that's how we write that. It's all of the points x, 1, where x is less than negative 2. 
our maximum would be this upper line. Okay. Notice all of my <clears throat> y values. Let's put a negative there. All my y values are at positive 1. Notice I just made a little typo up there. So this should have been negative 1 up here. <clears throat> and down here my maximum is 1 with any x value as long as that x value is greater than negative 2. Okay. So there is an example of a fraction for you. Okay, this last one is pretty crazy too um, because it has multiple absolute values so we can't really just take our V and move it across the graph. Um, we're going to have to do some extra work here. There is an example in your book of what to do for one of these types of problems, but again, it's pretty high level. Um, if you, you're welcome to check that out, I'm going to describe another way in case that way confused you. Okay. So again, when you look at absolute values, anything significant that happens is going to happen when anything inside the absolute value becomes zero. So let's find out where significant changes will happen in our graph. We're going to take x minus 2 and set it equal to zero. We get at 2. When x is 2, something significant will happen with the graph. What about 3? x plus 3. Set that equal to 0. Okay. And the reason for that is because significant things happen as you go from positive to negative inside here, which the change between positive and negative is at 0. So significant things will happen at 2 and at negative 3 for the x value. Let's take a look at maybe what our graph might look like. I am going to just select values but now I kind of know where to select values because of these numbers. So I need to look at 2. I also want to know what happens close to 2, so I'm going to look at 1 and 3. Um, I'm going to choose some more x values. I'm going to want to look at negative 3, but I also want to know what happens to the right and left of that, so I'm going to choose negative 2 and negative 4. And I'm going to plug those into my function one at a time. So let's start with 1. If I were to plug 1 into this function, I have one absolute value of 1 minus 2 plus the absolute value of 1 plus 3. Um, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. Let's change colors here. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Absolute value of 4 is 4. 1 plus 4 gives me 5. Let's find out what we have at 2. So again, we put 2 in for all of our x's and see what happens. 2 minus 2 is 0. 2 plus 3 is 5. We get 0 plus 5 is 5. <clears throat> Let's carry on. Let's look at what happens at 3. I'm going to come up here. 3 minus 2 plus 3 plus 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. 3 plus 3 is 6. 1 plus 6 is what comes out of that, or 7. Okay? Let's find out what happens at negative 2 down here. <clears throat> so we go negative 2 minus 2, negative 2 plus 3. Take the absolute values of those. Absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. Absolute value of 1 is 1. And I end up with 5 here. And let's see what happens at negative 3. We have negative 3 minus 2. And negative 3 plus 3, that gives me 0. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. And lastly, negative 4. What happens there? So we're running out of room here. <laughs> negative 4 minus 2, absolute value, plus negative 4 plus 3, absolute value. I get the absolute value of negative 6 and the absolute value of negative 1. So it makes those values positive when we take the absolute value and we get 6 plus 1 or 7. So let's look at this. Let's graph some of these points. 
we have the point 0.15 and the point 0.25, the point 0.37, okay, the point negative 0.25, the point negative 3, 5, and the point negative 4, 7. So it looks like, remember we said something significant would happen at 2 and at negative 3? It looks like that's where our graph kind of changes its shape. This is not at all what a traditional absolute value looks like. It looks like it's truncated down here and it's kind of cut off. But there's an idea of what it would look like. When we find our zeros, Notice we have no x-intercepts, so we have no zeros. I'm going to go ahead and, well, I should have erased sooner. <laughs> Our x-intercepts, we also have none. Y-intercept is up here at 5, so the point zero 0.05. Our domain, we can put any number in for x. We don't have a fraction this time, so it's not going to mess us up. Our range, we can see that our y-values go upward from 5, so our range is going to start at 5, including it, and go to infinity. The intervals where the function is decreasing, going downward to the right, would be this section here on the left, and that looks like it goes from negative infinity, need a new color here, that's not showing up very good, until it gets to negative 3, and then it flattened out. Okay, that was a constant interval. The intervals where the function is increasing, it started to increase again at 2 and went to infinity. A minimum for the function. Well, our minimum is a lot of values right here along this constant. So what we're going to do to describe those, the y value for each of those is a 5. Our x value is changing, so we're going to call it the point x5, where x is between negative 3 and 2. including those numbers. Okay, so that's how we would write that. There is no maximum because it doesn't stop at the top. It goes up forever. So I know these are kind of a co more complex examples. Hopefully you're good with the transformations that we did at the beginning of the class, um, and that can help you graph those first ones. Um, you are welcome to let me know.